Nathan here with the Out of the Woods YouTube channel. And in today's video, we're gonna be running the mini excavator, my Husqvarna and a chainsaw, using the tractor to move some logs and running the LT70 sawmill on some white pine. And judging by the appearance of these logs, my chance for success is highly doubtful. But one thing's for sure, we're gonna have a lot of fun today. You guys hang in there. All right, friends, before we head up to the sawmill, let's get the excavator and work on the burn pile. It's been burning for about two days. And I think if I push everything in the middle, it'll start burning again. Most of what we're burning right now is that rotten pine that we got out of that pile the other day. I've been working on that for the past three days. Hopefully today, I'll be able to finish it up. Before we start this thing up, let's see if we can take care of that beeping noise. All right, we got the panel off. I forgot to hit the record button so you guys didn't get to see that. Not that you missed anything. So this is the fuse bank right here. And the only one I could find that may relate to that beeping noise says horn. It's a five amp fuse. But I'm thinking that's probably the horn on the button over there. You push a little button and it, you know, horn goes off. So uh, I'm not sure if that's gonna be it or not. That's the only one that I could see on this little uh, diagram that would be close to being what we need to do right now. If that doesn't work, I'll have to find the beeper and it's probably somewhere around the engine cab area and uh, disable it that way. Hopefully this fuse will work, but I'm pretty doubtful. We'll pull it and see what happens. And this is reason number 455 why you should always have a Leatherman on your side right there. If you don't have one, Go buy one. Best $100 you'll ever spend. I know that may sound kind of expensive, but it's a good quality tool and it's well worth it. We'll see if we fix that problem. I've already got 11 hours on this machine already. Time goes by pretty fast when you're having fun, I guess. And this machine is a lot of fun. No, <laughs> let me push the horn button. Yep, well, that wasn't it. So we'll have to find that beeper somewhere around the engine cab and disable it the hard way, I guess. I know why those are on this machine. It's like everything else for safety reasons. Cotto sells a lot of their equipment to rental yards. So that's a pretty big liability, I guess, if you're renting machines out like this, you want that safety feature on there. And I guess that's why they make it hard for you to disable it because they want you to have it. Now for my purposes, as far as use goes for this machine, it's always going to be used on my property. I'm never going to take it out to a commercial site and do any work with it. So it really don't serve a purpose for me, but I understand why it's there. Let's see if we can move this box blade out of the way. I don't hardly use this thing anymore, but I got it if I ever needed, I guess. I use that land plane all the time now. guys that made short work of getting this fire stirred back up again that should take back off here in a little bit i need some 10 foot two by sixes and i think i can get some out of this log right here it looks like it's about 20 plus feet long we should get two 10 foot logs out of it and hopefully It'll be worth our time. This pine has been on the ground for probably a year and there's a lot of terrible signs on the outside of it. Take a look at those holes right there. Something's been down here eating on this stuff for a while. Hopefully there'll be something good in here. 
our chance of success is probably 50-50. Head up here and get the chainsaw and cut that one down to size. Man, it's nice out here today. 62 degrees. That's hard to beat for February. I'll take it. All right, guys, we'll mark off 10 foot sections and see how we can do. I'll probably go 10 and a half. If you don't have a way to mark your logs where you need to cut them, grab you a piece of bark. Fire starting to take off now. You just need a little help. Go ahead and knock the sawdust off the mill. All right, friends, this may be a total waste of time. And when I open up the first face on my opening cut, if it looks like this log is gonna be rotten, 
we'll just take it down to the burn pile because it's still burning. So I guess that's what we'll have to do. But based on what I've seen on the end grain, I think it'll be okay. We may have to take some heavy slab cuts to get rid of some waste that's rotted, but I think there's some decent wood in the middle of this log right here. So, fingers crossed, hopefully it's gonna be a good log, but it may not be. We do have some large knot clusters to deal with, but they're all the way around the log, so it's just part of it. This is white pine. We're gonna be sawing this into two by sixes, and here's what we're gonna do with this lumber. I'm gonna be building an equipment shed next month right here behind the sawmill building for the excavator and all the tractors. So I need some two by sixes for some framing lumber between my post, and I'm thinking about doing two stories actually. I've been thinking about here lately going up higher with this building, I'm not sure yet, but I need some two by sixes, and I want these two by sixes to be kiln dried, and the reason is I wanna paint them. If I don't paint them, I'm gonna have carpenter bees eating them year round, or all summer rather, and it's gonna be a complete disaster up there. So that's what we're gonna to have to do. Now I want a full dimension two by six, and I have to figure in kiln drying, and also running these through the molder to make them a perfect dimension two by six. So I'm gonna saw them at nine quarter, which is two and a quarter inches on the thickness. That would give me extra room for kiln drying, which allows for shrinkage, and also for running it through the molder and cleaning it up. And as far as the width goes, I'm gonna do seven inches. Cause when these come out of the kiln and the width has shrunk a little, I'm also gonna to have to put these on the sawmill and edge them to make them nice and true on both sides and then run them through the molder. So there's two extra steps on the width on these we're gonna to have to go through. And I think an extra inch would give me more than enough that I need to get a true two by six on the dimensions. Now for you guys out there that run sawmills and you sell kiln dry two by sixes, let me know down in the comments below what dimensions you're sawing at. I'm gonna do nine quarter by seven. And if I see a lot of waste with this process, after we run this through the molder, I may reduce that to maybe nine quarter by six and a half. I've never done this before. I've never made a two by six all the way through the process of kiln drying, then run it through the molder to clean it up on all four edges. Most of the time I just saw two by six, eight quarter by six inches wide, and I leave it that way and we use it. So this will be something different. And I think it'd be interesting to follow this lumber through the process over the next few weeks, how this goes. I'm hoping to have these in the kiln by this weekend if I can get things done around here. Key word, if I can get things done. So uh, we'll see what happens.
right, guys, I failed to mention earlier on the sawmill, we got a Joe Main Silver Tip Turbo 7. If you want to try those blades out, you guys know what to do. Call Joe. Cell phone numbers down in the video description. All right, guys, it looks like this log is going to be a winner. I wasn't sure about it, to be honest with you. And it does have something pretty interesting going on. Look at that blue stain right there on the corner. It's on that side as well and underneath it. And if you guys remember down in the log yard, I was showing you the holes on the bark that was caused by insects. Well, that was caused by pine beetles. And what pine beetles will do, they will go inside of the log and they'll have a fungus that they will spread inside of the log. And I hope I'm uh, explaining this the right way. I'm going straight my memory. And that fungus will attack the wood and turn it this blue color right here. They call that blue stained pine caused by the pine beetle. But that right there, friends, will actually make these boards, if we were sawing four quarter lumber, kind of valuable. They would bring more money than regular pine woodworkers like this blue pine right here for shiplap and for cabinetry. It gives it a real nice effect and gives it some color. I think it looks pretty good, but for two by sixes, I could really care less if it's there or not. All right, friends, I think I'm done for the day. I'm gonna put the chickens up, go grab some dinner, then go sit by the fire and enjoy the evening. And in case you're wondering what I'm having for dinner tonight, fried bologna sandwiches. Can't beat it. Thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. I'll see you back here in a few days. Mm -hmm.